Hi, I'm Cameron, and I just read comics. I love them. Welcome back to another episode of Cameron Reads Comics. On today's episode, we're talking about One Star Squadron by Mark Russell and Steve Lieber. Let's get right into it. So this is the trade paperback. It collects volume or One Star Squadron number one through six. This is like an office comedy drama with superheroes. It it is postured almost as like office space. The movie more than the office, like the Steve Carell sitcom, but uh, it's really freaking good. Uh, super lighthearted, but simultaneously super heavy. Super heavy. One of my favorite stories of 2022, and it is devastatingly underrated. So when it comes to accessibility for this story, very new reader friendly. You don't need to know who any of these characters are. Uh, and you really don't need to know much about like what's going on in the DC universe, which is one of the reasons I absolutely love it. I highly recommend this story to new readers because it'll give them context into the rest of like the scope of the DC universe. And like, it just gives you a little bit of like a taste of some of these characters. Now for the story, this story is written by Mark Russell, who is one of my absolute all-time favorite writers. Uh, I consider him to be the Adam McKay of comic books. He he not only tells a great satire, but he laces it in with some of like the best social commentary. I actually interviewed him after issue one of this series came out, so go check that out on my channel. It is one of my, probably to date, my favorite interview I've ever done. I just love Mark Russell, and so to pick his brain was very special. And then to see where I was then to where I am now in uh, reading this and talking to other creators, it's just really fun for me. A lot of Mark Russell's work centers around social issues and how heroism can affect it, and even superheroism. I think that... His grounded writing style has brought a fresh perspective to superhero comics. He subverts these monumental expectations and make can write like a Superman story where, you know, Superman doesn't, obviously he would, but it's not. The story of a meteorite crashing into Earth isn't as interesting as Superman helping a cat out of a tree. And the way that he can do that, and I just mean interpersonally, and the way that that connects with us as human beings... I think uh, Mark Russell nails that every single time. And this story is just like that. I just freaking... He reminds us that the biggest moments uh, of our humanity are the smaller ones. And I just think it's so brilliant because comics have this <laughs> monumental, giant scope. And it's hard to relate to a lot of these things, but uh, that's not missed on Mark Russell. He really digs into a lot of the smaller things and every... It's just so good. So this story centers, centers around a business called Heroes for You. Uh, it, it is a superheroism for capitalism idea. Uh, it's an app that will let heroes know when they need to be saving someone. Uh, and it'll appear, so, but like also when they need to save someone, but also like, hey, I want Superman to be at my birthday party. Kind of like cameo for superheroes, but they will show up at your doorstep, which is pretty cool. Now... In this story, it's like Red Tornado, the robot created by Dr. T.O. Morrow, Justice League member, I'd say like a B, a C-list superhero. He is the office manager. You know, he organizes who's going to go to what events and what's going on. So here's the team, though. The main characters of the story, at least. Red Tornado, Power Girl, who is so underrated, one of the most underutilized DC characters right now. Sorry, had to. Minuteman, who's a new character, the Heckler, new character, and G.I. Robot. This story broadly kind of asks the idea of what makes a hero. And it takes, like, again, these are D-list. I'd say the rest of them, not... Just a lot of the characters in here are not the top-tier DC characters. But, like, if you give them attention, they will do amazing things. <laughs> and so this is just another story like that. So... It takes also characters from continuity, like really old continuity, as in Gangbuster, who is a 90s Superman, like, what is it, uh, uh, acquaintance, and, you know, makes him mentally ill, and 
it's a character that wasn't being touched for a long time, but you know, you know, we had our way with him in comic books and then, you know, he fell off. And so it's kind of picking up what's happened to him in the meantime. And he's incredibly mentally ill. His mental health care has fallen to the wayside. And, uh, the whole story is about, you know, red tornado seeing this guy that nobody wants and, and bringing him in while simultaneously, you know, power girl is reading a book written by Maxwell Lord, who is a notoriously, bad guy uh lex luthor-esque justice league international villain and there's a little bit of corporate sabotage uh there's a little bit of all these other things superman also appears in this book he comes in and uh, he talks to the corporate boardroom of the heroes for you app and he treats it as the moral center and he thinks that superheroism for capitalism is not a good idea because superheroes don't go into their fields because there's monetary gain. But then it, there's the idea that, you know, not every hero has the capacity or super capacity of Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman, you know? The Heckler, G.I. Robot, all these other characters, like, they don't have the means. They're not billionaire Bruce Wayne, Pulitzer Prize writing Clark Kent, you know? They need to find a way to make their ends meet. And so... It's just these small interpersonal issues. You know, there's some corporate sabotage stuff. There's Superman, you know, critiquing the board and he's just saying, this isn't right. And it, it goes on and on and on. It's really, really, really freaking good. And I love it. Now for the art in this book. The art, the artist is one of my favorites, and I don't know if this could ever be topped. I don't think this story would be as good as it is if it didn't have this artist. It is Steve Lieber. He, um, I don't know tonally if any other artist could have done this. I think his tone is perfect because this book is a satire. Um, we really get raw emotional moments, but also there's no lack of lightheartedness in this series, which feels like an impossible balance. So to be able to receive that from Steve Lieber is amazing. Uh, Mark Russell will tell you he he only works with Steve's. They're his favorites. But uh, yeah, I think this story is a great freaking critique of that. I don't know if Jim Lee's art or Jason Fabric's art could have worked in this story, but Steve Lieber's is perfect, especially if you guys liked Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen by Matt Fraction. Same artist. Uh, and same emotional depth. I think he's one of the most probably underrated artists in comics. Uh, he he crushes. And so I really want to see this team collaborate together again. And this brings us now to our rating. I don't think anyone will be surprised to find out that I think this book is a 10. I think everyone needs to be reading it. I think it's the most underrated. I'm going to uh, <laughs> keep this forever. This this is like, you know, you think about your comics coming and going or whatever, but this is not going anywhere in my collection. Uh, I'm so glad that I got the chance to read it. I really want you guys to read it too, but I also really want you guys to clobber those like and subscribe buttons. If you have read this, leave a comment. Tell me your favorite part. Tell me what you liked about this book because I want to talk about it more and because it's not so mainstream and not, I couldn't uh, talk about it with everyone. So Check it out. My name's Cameron. I don't just read comics. I love them. I'll see you guys next time.